Hey everyone, welcome to Lizzie's Little Library and the Newberry Project. Today's book is the 1975 winner called M.C. Higgins the Great by Virginia Hamilton. The author has two honors as well for The Planet of Jupiter Brown and Sweet Whispers Brother Rush. And this is one of the strangest books I've ever read. It doesn't really have a plot. The title character, MC, lives on the side of a mountain in rural Ohio with his family. The story covers three days of his life. It was both boring and confusing. I can completely see young readers rage quitting this book. For more detail, MC, whose real name is Mayo Cornelius, I thought he was 13, but the copy I have is an ex-library edition, and their description on the index card has him at 15. He has three younger siblings, and he does most of the child watching. Mom works some mysterious job, and Dad seems to be a drunk. Dad works sporadically when someone at one of the mines is out sick, and MC worries about him spending all the money at the bar rather than on food. Dad treats MC like a peer. They often wrestle and fight, and he reminds me a lot of Rex Waller from The Glass Castle. I have zero patience for negligent, immature, selfish parents like this. The family lives somewhere near where strip mining is done. The author never really identified where in Ohio they are. I have to assume they're somewhere near the West Virginia border. The author also never explains the process of strip mining, just that there is a spoil heap that is slowly moving closer to the house. She doesn't really explain what a slow... Excuse me, she doesn't really explain what a spoil heap is either. My copy, again, the library, su the library supplied the description. They call it a slag heap. Again, not really a description. None of the adults are very concerned. It's just MC who has worries that it will become a mudslide and wipe out the house. Dad, by the way, has a ton of car parts all over the house and MC twice mentions swarms of thousands of flies. Gross. He meets two outsiders in the story. The first is a man named Louis James. The second is a girl named Loretta Outlaw. I'm guessing that's not her real name. MC convinces himself James is a famous music producer who's going to make Mom a star. He records her singing, then much later admits he's collecting vocal records to make his own dad proud. Or something. It could have been explained so much better. He's definitely not a producer, and he is not here to make mom famous. MC tells us Loretta is at least 16 because she has a car. She left home to have an adventure, and she seems to be flirting with MC, with his dad, and with his friend Ben. She disappears one day. Something else that was super confusing was this 40-foot pole. MC regards it as his prized possession. It's even featured prominently on the front cover. He installed a bike seat and pedals to it, but they're not connected to anything. He just sits up there. Mom later says Dad regards it as a monument to all of his ancestors who died on the mountain. Again, I don't get it. What was most confusing to me were the descriptions, both on the library tab and on the dust jacket. I read the entire book, and I have literally zero idea what was supposed to be this sudden dramatic climax. I mean, just as a, the, the inside cover tells us. The third paragraph on the inside cover. Past and present, daydream and reality meet in inevitable conflict. An MC must come to terms with his family and heritage and his own desires. In a sudden, dramatic climax, he realizes that safety for himself and his family will never be found in fleeing the hills. I have no idea what, what that climax was supposed to be. The story ends with MC piling up the front yard garbage into a makeshift wall, thinking it will block the spoil heap from wiping out the house. This book doesn't even really have a climax. It just ends. The end. To make this book even more confusing, there were parts that just randomly jumped to visions inside of MC's head of how a situation might play out. So it wasn't always clear if events were actually happening or just in his head. If they're going to go to stories inside his head, I would have really preferred 
if they be set off in italics or if they be in block quotes or somehow tell us this is not actually happening. I think this would be super confusing to young readers. As a result, I, as an adult reader, even found it confusing and not especially well written. The nicest thing I can say about it is that it seemed to be an inferior version of A Confederacy of Dunces. I know that book is very polarizing. I personally really liked that book. I don't know if I want to say I liked the main character, but he was definitely memorable. I can see why others disagree with that opinion. That's that's fine. For what it's worth, the author of this book also wrote The House of Dies Drear, which I had always, always known about and just never read until last year. I DNF'd that book because it was so bad. The internet told me the ending was a basic Scooby-Doo ending, and honestly, I was thankful I didn't waste any further time with it. Without the Newberry sticker on this book, I would have quit it after 50 pages. So it's probably uh, rather appropriate that my actual sticker fell off and I just have the remnant of where the Newberry sticker had been. In the end, I honestly, I don't know a single person, child or adult, who would enjoy this. So I have to actively discourage against reading it. The end.